Welcome back to another episode where I'm going to attempt to do these electrics which is really really grinding my gears. What I need to do is get this cable which is going to be the positive feed from the fan battery and then this is going to be the mains connection outlet or inlet um, from when you go to a campsite and you want to plug it in. So this is also going to be situated underneath the dash. Underneath the dash, underneath the bonnet. Um, some people have them fitted on the outside of the vans, but I don't like that, so I'm going to put this underneath the bonnet. So this cable and this cable both need to feed through from the bonnet, under the dash, under the floor, to the driver's seat. And I'm trying to figure it out and I have no idea what I'm doing. What I've discovered so far is I needed to remove the glove box which I didn't film but it was relatively simple. Eight screws, that came out pretty easy. This tray was underneath. That's pretty simple for once. Trying to find a grommet. Can't seem to find one. So the red cable and the blue cable are going to be connected to this positive part of the battery and then they need to feed through. So I need to remove this which then exposes this here. So T25 torx bit. Remove that. Remove that bit there. There's also one hidden underneath there, which I'm going to try and get now without having to remove all this. I'm going to try and be smart <laughs> and just get the bit. Go underneath. So I'm going to use a spanner. Try it. So instead of removing all this here, this is like take three. So instead of removing this entire piece here, I've already done that piece, I need to unscrew this screw here. So I've got my T25 bit, which I'm going to put on this. Lefty loosey, right it tighty. Yeah, that way around, which I'm hoping. I'm putting there like that. So that should pop out now, there we go. So this piece here should come loose now. All right. Yeah, it is a really clean one. So that should have exposed this grommet here. So that grommet there is where these cables are going to feed through. Right, so I managed to get this grommet out from the front by going up here and feeling around and then I just ended up finding a hole and pushed it it came out. So what I need to do now is drill two holes big enough to fit this cable through so if I just do it one size smaller so it's quite a tight fit when it goes through and then I can pull it through and just somehow feed it underneath this floor. Right so I fed these through and then if I just pop that back a little bit it just creates a better, a better seal there. So now I'm going to feed through from the engine bay. So the idea is that I've left myself enough red to put fuse on and whatever and then connect it to there and then the blue is going to have plug on that's going to be somewhere housed i'll figure that out at some point that might house it down here somewhere nice and there you have it it's fed through exactly what it says no idea what it all is for but he does hello gorgeous what are you doing now i have no idea <laughs> right so these cables have now been fed through that hole from the bonnet and seeing that. I need to lift up this carpet here so that I can now channel these down here through this channel here, through that channel there with all those wires. I'm going to remove this seat in a second and then put it underneath there. I'm hoping I don't have to remove this but everyone else seems to have removed all this and I really don't want to remove that but if I do... Uh, crossed, we don't have to. Yeah, I mean it's the handbrake so what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> oh, the whole van's moving. Right, so I just removed these four bolts from underneath this. I'm just going to swivel it back. I'm not going to completely remove it. Oh, there we go. Oh, the whole van's moving. A few moments later. You know what, we can deal with it for this instead. He's scared of everything. <laughs> anyway, right. Right, so I kind of messed up just a little bit, <laughs> as usual. Um, so don't use this as a tutorial as per norm. This here, I tried to remove in the same way that I removed the passenger seat, which was from the bottom. Don't do that. Oh, the whole van's moving. So instead, there are some bolts here, here, and here that you need to remove, which are from the railings of the seat that slides back and forth. 13 mil spanner or whatever, just one spanner. Move the seat forward and backwards to be able to get to these because they're a bit fiddly. Once you've done that, you can lift that off. No problem, but you do need to take these casings off. This one did just pop off, but this one here is a bit more annoying. There's a little lever underneath 
So you got to pull that lever down and then slide it up like that. It should just slide off after that and then it slide off with it. Then remove your seat. But one thing I would say I would recommend is that you chock your wheels first because as we were removing this, <laughs> the handbrake came loose. Oh, the whole van's moving. And the van luckily was in reverse, but almost went forward, so we had to chalk the wheels. Slightly moved, didn't it? Slightly, slightly moved, we slightly shat ourselves, but anyway. So make sure that you chalk your wheels first and make sure you've got it in the opposite gear to wherever you are. So if you're facing downhill, put it in reverse. If you're facing uphill, put it in first gear. And yeah, that's it. So that seat's out now. So that means I can start arranging the battery and all the battery chargers and battery protect and whatever. They're all going to sit underneath there. That's it for now. Bloody hell. So always something goes wrong, isn't it? Well, no, I'm just not very good at this. <laughs> So yesterday I thought I would try and take out the cab carpet or rubber floor so I can put all my wiring underneath, potentially insulate it and sound it in it underneath, get it all nice and clean. So in my wisdom did that, which meant taking out the driver's seat, which meant taking out the handbrake and also the passenger seat, completely stripping it bare to remove this. So that's the cab floor all nicely removed, which is great stuff, yeah? However, if you came to this channel to watch somebody who knows what they're doing and potentially figure out how you can convert your camper van then I've got some news for you you came to the wrong channel however if you wanted to watch somebody completely mess up every time and get things wrong and have a good laugh then you're in luck because I just cocked up big time so as you can see driver's seat out passenger seat out handbrake off. Safety first. Oh, the whole van's moving. So once all that was removed, I thought, I know, I'll remove the plywood floor. Then I can put some insulation, some sound editing in underneath that, get it ready. Then I can put the carpeting on the walls. Jobs are good. In. However, here's the plywood floor. It's not actually fitted. It's just cut to size and placed in the van because I've got nowhere to put it. So when we tried to remove it last night, we thought, I know, we'll lift, lift it up and slide it out the side door. But why not take it out of the tailgate, Sam? Well, I'm going to show you why. So there's not a cat and else chance that that tailgate is opening. So now I have to put the driver's seat back in, refix the handbrake, edge it forward, remove the plywood floor, put the van back and remove the seat and the handbrake yet again. All right, let's crack on. Right, so I'm not going to completely fit it. I'm just going to put a couple of screws in. Bolts. See, I have no idea what I'm doing. That's the handbrake back on. <laughs> oh my god. That's what we should have done to begin with. What an idiot. What a ball like now, all I've got to do is remove the seat again for the third time. <laughs> uh, but at least I know how to use the handbrake now. I can take a handbrake on and off, it's fairly easy. I'm in quite the pro. Well yeah, you started to learn stuff. I mean, I'm learning the hard way, so I won't use this channel as a tutorial, trust me. Go somewhere else for that. But if you want to follow somebody, do it wrong consistently. And wear your guys. Wear the t-shirts. Oh. Right, let's remove it again. Oh boy. I always get a bit worried when I put the handbrake down. It's in gear, reverse, and it's chocked. Chucked, chocked, whatever. Moment of truth. And there's a car coming. I'm still here. Mm. And we're back to square one. Good morning everyone. Good morning everyone. So another day has passed as usual because I'm not very good at scheduling these and yesterday I decided to not film anything and remove the floor and then start some floor prep for when we put the insulation down. Then we can carpet on the walls. Then I can put the floor back down. Sickerflex, Sickerflex, Sickerflex. That 
So let's crack on. I'll show you what I've done so far. So I've decided to put some sound editing between all these tiny little grooves, which you might think is unnecessary, but the larger grooves, these larger pieces here, are going to have 6mm plywood to help level off the floor with these raised ridges. So I'm going to cut them to length. They're going to be sticker flex to the floor. And then after that, I can put some sound editing on. No, after that, I can put some insulation on. <laughs> also put some anti-rust down on the screw holes that were previously made by the previous owner's flooring that was put down. I've, you may also notice that I decided to actually sand it and insulate the wheel arches, which I think was a good move. Wasn't as difficult as I thought, but I've done both those yesterday. I didn't bother filming it because it's going to be boring as per the rest of these videos, but hopefully they will get better. And yeah, right, let's crack, crack on. Get the star of the show, Alfie. Can you wolf it down? Did you enjoy that? I'm still going. Good boy. And back to bed. <laughs> Look at the state of this garage. What a mess. Right, what do I need? There you are. Got all black and decker. I also need this. A few moments later. Right, so one thing to know, these are not officially proper safety glasses. However, they do the job. They're just clear. I'd recommend you wearing proper PPE for this. So anyway, so I've got the main pieces down, as you've seen, labelled on one to six. Now I've just got the thin slivers in between. So what I'm gonna do is just measure the width of one and then just cut a load, trim them to length. Jobs are good and it's fairly easy, there's a spider on my camera. Ooh. Ooh. No, he's gone. Now because these aren't stuck down yet, I'm not going to measure the exact width, so I'm just going to eye them up, cut them to what I think. We're not to a thou. It's not like I'm building a house, is it? Well, a house on wheels. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so that's all the plywood slithers that are basically packers. They're just gonna stop the sponginess of the floor when the plywood floor goes down over the top, just levels everything out with the existing metal ridges of the bodywork. So yeah, that was fairly easy, straightforward. I mean, my cuts are not exactly the straightest. They're about as straight as the River Thames. All I need to do now is Sikaflex them down. Sikaflex 221, I think is the product I'm using. Then after that, I'm going to put the Superliner, Dodo Superliner Pro over the top and then it's ready for captain. Exciting times, although not looking forward to the captain. Alright, so I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.